welcome back in the previous steps we talked in depth about the list and the set interfaces and now it's time to move on to the queue interface a queue is used when you would want to arrange things in the order you would want to process them for example a to do list right so for example as soon as i come in in the day i would have a list of things to do and as new things come in i would take them and put them in the right place in the to do list so that i can pick them up when the right time for them comes so for that kind of processing queues are awesome the important thing is queue also extends collection so it supports all the collection methods in addition to the collection methods queues support methods called add offer remove poll and pick we we'll look at all these methods a little later when we do the hands on the implementation of the queue that we would be using is something called a priority queue in a priority queue by default elements are stored in a sorted natural order in the order in which you would want to process them however we'll see later that we can provide custom comparator implementations to change the order so if you want to have a specific custom order in which you would want the elements to be processed we can do that as well in the next step let's start with the hands on for the queues until the next step bye bye welcome back in this step let's play around with the different methods which are offered by the queues let's start with creating a new queue right so queue of let's create a queue of string so queue of string q is equal to new we would want to use the priority queue which stores it in the natural order priority queue of string let it be empty at the start right so the queue is empty the method which we can use to get an element out of the queue is q dot poll when the queue is empty q dot poll will return a null now i don't want to add an element to the queue so i can say q dot offer and put in an element so i can say i would want to offer an element called apple you can also do an add all that would actually add multiple elements so i can create a list and use that to add multiple elements to a queue so apple let's say i would insert in a reverse order so i'll say zebra monkey and cat now what's in the queue let's see it's in the sorted order you can see a c m and z and if i do a queue dot poll aha it comes it gives apple so we can process apple now and if you print q now what would happen apple is out of the queue so the remaining things are ready so if i do a q dot poll now the next element will be picked up next next again next element next again and if i do it again it's empty the way q works is very similar to how a q works at a movie theater or at some exhibition outside except the fact that in a queue you can set priority for the elements by default the priority here is the natural order so it's in the ascending order so as soon as an element is added to a queue based on where it fits in in the order it will be processed let's move on to eclipse and let's create a new class what we want to do is we would want to specify a custom order here the natural order is being used to process the queue we don't want to specify a different order let's see how to do that right now so queue oops i would need to type in class actually so i would want to create a new class i would want to call this queue runner and i'll actually need a main method so let's do that maximize this class and what i would want to do is let's copy this statement from here so we are creating a queue and let's add a list of elements to this right aha i would first need to import import import
import now we are ready so it's compiling that's cool so now i can say q dot poll and here it's not automatically printed so let's do a system dot out so if i do q dot poll you'd see the order in which they are processed right so zebra first monkey next actually cat first because cat is first monkey and zebra c m z that's the order in which they are being processed right now that's the natural order however let's say i would want to define a different order let's say i would want to create my own custom order i would want to say i would want to process these based on the length of this string so whichever is the smaller one smaller length i would want to process that first how do i do that the way i can do that is by defining a comparator earlier we saw how to create a comparator right so let's create another implementation of the comparator i'll call this class string length comparator implements comparator this would be implementing comparator for a string right so for a string let's import comparator and it would give us a compilation error control 1 add unimplemented methods as usual let's make this value 1 value 2 how do we want to compare we would want to compare based on the length of the strings right so we can do integer dot compare and say value 1 dot length and value 2 dot length so this would be doing it in the ascending order so let's see in the priority queue constructor you can actually pass in a new instance of the comparator as simple as that so you can it's quite simple right so we created a string length comparator implements comparator and over here we are passing the string length comparator here so now let's run this you can see that the order now is cat zebra monkey three letters followed by five letters followed by six letters if i want to reverse the order all that i would need to do is reverse this so comma that's it now you would see that the order is reversed the higher length is processed first and the lower length after that in this video we were looking at the basics of q we were looking at poll offer and also we looked at how to implement a custom algorithm for how elements in the queue should be processed until the next video bye bye welcome back in this step let's start with the last collection that we would be talking about map interface the most important thing of about a map interface is it does not extend collection interface so all the operations related to collection do not really apply to map so map is part of the collections framework but it's not really implementing collection interface map is used to store key value pairs for example i have these kind of characters right so i would want to store how many times a is present 3 a is present 3 times c is present 3 times as well so this is the kind of scenarios where i would go for a map if you look at the map interface the typical methods which are present in the map interface are related to key values right so the basic ones are the same size is size and is empty what is the size how many entries are there is empty and after that is you have put key and value so you can put a key with a value or you can get the value with the specific key so in the previous example i can say i put a value with a comma 3 and i can say get the value for a it becomes 3 you can remove a specific key so it would remove the entire entry for that specific and you can use methods like put all clear is to empty the collection this is present with all the other collections as well you can get the keys as a set so you can get a set of a comma c comma other elements which are present in there so which are called the keys you can get a set with all the keys so this is key this is value 
key value. So you can get the set with all the keys which are present in here. You can also get a collection with the values. So you can get three, comma three and so on as values. Let's discuss these methods and a few more when we get to the hands-on section for the map interface. There are four important implementations of the map interface. Hash map, hash table, linked hash map, and the tree map. We'll dig deeper into them in the next step. In this step, we were introduced to the concept of a map. Map is nothing but a set of key value pairs and the interface map provides a wide variety of methods related to this. You can get list of all the keys or list of all the values or you can iterate over the keys and try to get the value for a specific key. You can insert a value with a specific key and value. You can get the values based on a specific key. Welcome back. In this step, let's look theoretically at all different implementations of the map. The first implementation that we would be looking at is hash map. Hash map, think about what would the underlying data structure, it would be, you're right, it's a hash table. So in a hash map, as usual, it's unsorted and unordered. The next one is a hash table. What is the difference between hash map and a hash table? Hash table also uses the hashing technique underneath in the data structure. So there is no difference as far as the operations are concerned between the hash table and the hash map. However, hash table is like vector. It's synchronized. All the methods in the hash table are synchronized. So it's more thread safe than the hash map. And just like hash map, it's unsorted and unordered. The other key difference between the hash table and hash map, which is kind of a typical interview question, is that hash map allows to store a key with null value. So in a hash map, you can store a key with null value. However, that is not allowed in a hash table. The next map implementation is a linked hash map. Just like the linked hash set, over here, the insertion order is maintained. However, it's not sorted. And because of the insertion order, it would have little slower insertion and deletion than the hash map. But the iteration looping around the elements is much faster because all elements have links to each other. The last important map interface implementation is a tree map. As usual, whenever you see a tree, the underlying data structure is a tree. And therefore, the data is stored in a sorted order. And as usual, whenever we have a tree, because the data is sorted, we would not only implement the specific interface, but we also implement another interface. In the case of a tree set, it was a navigable set. In the case of a tree map, it is a navigable map. In this step, we looked at the different implementations that are present for a map. We looked at hash map, which is unsorted on order. We looked at hash table, which is the same as hash map, but all the methods are synchronized, so it's thread safe. We looked at linked hash map, which maintains insertion order. And we have the tree map, which has the data in the sorted order. And in addition to the map interface, tree map also in implements a navigable map interface. In the next step, let's do a little bit of hands-on around all the maps. Until the next step, bye-bye. Welcome back. In this video, let's look at some of the basic operations that you can do with a map. Let's create a very simple map and do all the retrieve operations around them. All right, so let's create a map. And if I'm creating a map, I need to say two different types, right? What is the type of the key and what is the type of the value, right? So let's just say the string that we are going to use, sorry, the key bit that we are going to use is a string and value, right? And the value is a integer. And let's say this is a map is equal to map dot off. And you can specify alternate strings and integers. So let's say I'm storing how many times a specific character occurs in a string. So A is three times, B is five times, C, oops, syntax should be right. So let's say Z is 10 times. And now you can see that a map is created. 
z is having a value 10, a is having a value 3 and b is having a value 5. As usual, when we use the dot of function, we cannot insert a value. This is a, let's say I would want to try to put a value into this. So let's say I would want to say map.put r comma 1. Nope, that's not allowed because by default, anything that we create with a dot off is immutable. So you cannot change the data in there. Now, I want to see what's data in there. So I did a map and I see the data. Now, I want to find out the value for the key Z. How do I do that? Map dot get and pass in Z. So that gives you 10. Similarly, map dot and if you try to search for a value it does not exist, it returns you a null value. Similar to other collections, you have size, how many elements are there, is it empty. You also have methods to check if a specific value is present. So you can say contains key, or does it contain a key A, right? So yes. Does it contain a key F, false. And also you can check for the value. You can say, does it contain a value 3? Yep, it's present. Let's just print the map. Yep, it's here. So if does it contain a value for false? So these are all some of the utility methods which are present in common across all implementations of the map. The other thing you can do is try and get the complete set of keys. You can say key set. It would retrieve you a data structure, a collection with the keys alone. And you can also say map.values. What does it return? The values. So if I look at the map, all the keys Z, A, B are what are written by the key set and the values returns 10, 3 and 5. We looked at the basic retrieval operations in a map. Let's now shift our attention to do a little bit of manipulation of whatever data is present in a map. Let's refresh the map. So we are creating a map again. And now what I would want to do is create a hash map with the same values. So I would say string comma integer hash map is equal to as usual, it's new hash map. And I'll not specify the types and say of map. Cool, right? Now we have a hash map. Now how do I add elements into a hash map? Hash map dot put, I can say, f comma 5 so f is 5 times now if i say hash map you'd see that it's present 5 times so as soon as we do a put it's turning a null back saying the previous value which was present for f is null so that means there was nothing for f earlier now if i do z let's say z is now occurring 11 times what would happen the value of z changes to 11. It returns the previous value also back. So when I do a z hash map dot put z 11, it returns the previous value of z, which was 10 back. Now let's do a hash map. You can see that it's a is 3, z is 11, b is 5, and f is equal to 5. In this step, we looked at all the common operations that can be performed on a map, and we used hash map as an example. In the next step, let's focus on looking at the differences between hash map, tree mapped, and linked hash map. Until the next step, bye bye. Welcome back. In this step, let's see the differences between different implementations of the map. Let's take hash map, linked hash map, and tree map. Let's start with hash map. Hash map of, let's use the same example that we used earlier so integer hash map of string comma integer hash map is equal to new hash map and semicolon that's cool right so now the hash map does not have anything let's insert a few values hash map dot put let's start in from z z comma five let's say a comma 15 f comma 25 l comma 250 and now i print hash map you can see that the hash map is neither in this sorted order nor 
is it in the insertion order so it loses both the sort order and the insertion order but it's efficient because it does not care about sorting it does not care about the insertion order so it's much more efficient than the other data structures which are related to maps when you don't really worry about which order your keys are stored in hash map is an absolutely perfect data structure the next one is a linked hash map right so let's start with linked hash map string of integer linked hash map is equal to new hash map oops i'm saying hash map it should have been linked hash map right let's add in let's add in linked hash map dot put f comma 25 a comma 15 z comma 5 and l comma 250 so we are interesting it in the order f a z l and now when i do a linked hash map you would see exactly that order present so f a z l so it show, stores the insertion order the order in which we are inserting it is the way it stores the keys now let's look at the tree map right tree map is the last one string comma integer tree map or i can just say tree map is equal to new tree map now in here i want to add in tree map dot put f is 25 right and then we would want to add a same values 15 and z with 5 and l with 250 now if i print in the tree map what would you expect it would be in the sorted order of the key so a f l and z what we are looking at here are the three different implementations of the map interface and we saw what was the difference between them very very clearly now let's get to the exercises that's the interesting part given a string let's say this is a great thing i would want to find out given a string i would want to find out how many times each character is present in this string that's one the second thing is how many times each word is present in this specific string those are the two things i would want to find out now how do you do that that's the exercise for you use eclipse and try to write a simple program to do that i'll see you in the next video where we will be discussing the solution to this until the next video bye bye welcome back in this video let's look at the exercise we discussed about in the last step let's create a new class because we are in the map let's call this map runner i'll have a main and let's have our string stored in here right so let's say our string string is equal to this is an awesome occasion this is this has never happened before let's say this is the string right let's split it so if i press enter in here it would be appearing on the two lines so this is our string which we would want to focus on i would want to now identify how many times each character is present in this specific string how do i do that that's where our map right so you can store this character is stored this many times that's what is the awesome thing about a map what we can do is we can start with creating a very simple map right i'll start with a map interface directly so i'll say map of string comma integer occurrences i'll call this and is equal to new hash map of string and integer so i don't need to specify it again right i'll import hash map i'll import map and now oops it's importing the wrong map i don't want this one i would want oops let's go here and I would want java.util.map that's the map we are interested in now 
let's go here and say occurrences dot if I want to add a, a key value then it would be like this right so if a is happening I would want to say a is 1 I would do something of this kind right so by default in occurrences they would not be anything so if I'm going through this string one character by character maybe it's possible that this character might not be present in the keys in the list of keys of the map or it's present if it's not present when we try to look it up we would get a null back and if it's written a null back then we would initialize t with one so i would start off from here so i would see okay t t is one right now i'll scan through after this i would say occurrences dot put h comma one and so on and so forth after this i I would have i comma 1 and when I see this i, when I look up the keys, then I would see, oh, there is one i already present. So what I would need to do is increment. So I need to make it 2. So that's kind of the algorithm that we would use. So let's try and pl play around with it. I've just looked at it We're using string. We don't really need to use a string. We can use a character as well because we want to store for every character right so now let's go ahead uh, the next thing that i would want to do is to loop around this string right so so i would want to identify the individual characters one of the ways i can do that is get all the characters so i'll say char cares is equal to str dot char array so this would return all the elements in a character array and now i can start processing it using a enhanced for loop so for char character inside characters i'll call this characters it will be consistent so for char in characters what we want to do we get a character right so we would want to first check if it's there get the character what we want to do if it is there we increment the count right that's the algorithm if it is not there initialize to one that's kind of the algorithm right so let's do get the character first so str dot get oops we already have the character so we don't really need to get it as such we need to check if it's there inside the hash map right so i need to say occurrences dot get the character if this character is there let's assign it to a local variable so if this integer is equal to is equal to null that means it's not there right so then what i would need to do is i would need to say occurrences dot put character comma value would be one right so that's the initialization else occurrences dot put is same character but we would want to increase the value by one right so i can say integer plus one if it's not there we initialize it to one if it's there then we put the character with a incremented value looks very very simple right so let's do a sys out is that all cool right now you can see that there are so many spaces a is five times b is one time c is so many times two d is one time e is eight you can cross verify it so you can check if it's really true so that's how we would print the characters now if i want to get these strings the logic is very very simple right so it's exactly the same logic except that we would be playing with a string so what we would need to do is let's create a map with string So I'll start with a map of string comma integer and let's say I'll call this string occurrences and this would be a hash map over here what we want to do is we would want to identify all the words in this string str so the way we can do that is str dot split so I can say split by space 
So it would give me all the words which are present in there. I can take this into a local airway. So this is words, right? So we now have a list of words. I can now loop around them. So string word in words, we need to get the word. And if it's null, then we put the word with one. Otherwise, we put the word with integer plus one. Oh, it's not occurrences. I should use string occurrences. Right? We are trying to do two things in the same method and that is really the confusion. <laughs> so now let's make sure that we have all the logic right. So string occurrences is equal to hash map words. We are splitting it by space and getting all the words in. We are looping around the words and checking if the word is there. If it's not there, then we put it with a value one, else we increment the value. And that looks cool, right? So here, last thing we would want to do is to print string occurrences. Let's run this. Okay, awesome is one, never is one, occasion is one, before is one. This is, has, and happened. So only this is pleasant two times. The other improvement I can see we can make is remove the dots because dots need not be considered as a word. So that's an improvement for later. You can try that as an exercise, how you would do that. But for enough, we are able to print the number of times each character is in the string and also the number of times a word occurs in this specific string. I hope it was an interesting exercise for you to try and I hope you have learned something from this. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In this video, we'll look at some of the additional operations that are present in tree map, which are not present in other maps. So let's create a tree map. Let's put a few values in as usual very quickly. Z, L. So we now have a simple tree map present with F, Z and L. Let's add another value, A, and let's add B with value 25. And let's add another one with G25. Now, if I have tree map, what are the values which are present in here? Okay, now there are sufficient of values. All the values are in sorted order of the keys. So you can see A, B, F, G, L, and Z. That's the characteristic of a tree map, right? That's what we learned. Whenever we see a word tree, it's always sorted. As we indicated before, tree map implements in addition to the map, navigable map. And navigable map provides a lot of other interesting methods. Let's start with the basics, right? So let's say I would want to find out what is the one which is next to B. So I can say tree map dot higher key of B. This returns the key which is higher than B, so greater than B. Now I can see C, it would return the same thing because it's greater than C. However, there is another function similar to what we had in this sets, in the tree set, which is ceiling key. Ceiling key returns greater than equal to the value which you have passed. Higher key would only check for greater than. Ceiling key is greater than or equal to and higher key is greater than. And you have corresponding functions on the lower side as well. So lower key returns A and you have a floor key which returns B. So this is less than B and this is less than or equal to B. You can also get the first entry which is present inside the tree map. Tree map dot first entry. You can also get the last entry which is present in the T map. Because this is sorted data, it's easy to get all the data. Let's print the data so that we can use it as a reference quickly. So A is 15, Z is 5, last entry. Because the data in the tree map is sorted, it's easy to get the data around which is the first, which is the last, which is greater than something, which is less than something and things like that. Now, similar to tree set, you can also have functionality to do sub maps, right? So sub map, I can say I would want the sub map from C 
to y. It's written everything between c and y, right? So it's written 25, 25, and 250. Let's try b with z. You'd see that b is included, so it's greater than or equal to b, but less than z. So submap is inclusive on the left side, exclusive on the right side. So z is not really included. So if you want to include z as well, b comma true, z comma true. So now you'd see that z also is included. What we are looking at in this specific video are some of the important operations that the tree map gets because it implements the navigable map interface. Because the data is sorted, we can get first entry, last entry, we can get submap between a certain values, and we can get values around keys, which is greater than this, less than this, and things like that. I'll recommend you to try and play around with all the methods which are present in the navigable map interface, and I'm sure you would have a lot of fun with it. I'll see you in the next step. Until then, bye-bye. Welcome back. In this section, we discussed extensively about different collections. We started with list, which can store a list of elements, including duplicates. Then we moved on to set, where we talked about the fact that a set cannot have any duplicates present. And Q is used to ensure that an order is established between the elements and each element is processed only once. And we also looked at map, which is used to store a set of key value pairs. We did a few exercises with them. We did a few puzzles with them. And we looked at multiple implementations with these things. We also look at the underlying data structures to get a feel of how the data is represented internally. I would leave you with a few tips. The first tip is hash. Whenever you see a word hash in the name of a collection, then it will be unordered and unsorted. So by default, a hash table based collection is always unordered and unsorted. So you don't maintain the insertion order and you don't maintain the sort order as well. The next tip is linked. When you see a linked, then it means the elements are linked to each other. We would be using a linked list. It might also be a doubly linked list. You have a link to a previous element and the next element. Once you are using a linked list, then order is definitely maintained. It does not store the data in a sorted way, but it stores it in the order in which data is inserted. The third tip is the keyword tree. The keyword tree means that the data is stored in an underlying tree structure in a sorted way. So anytime you see a keyword tree, then you can say the data is going to be stored in a sorted order. And in addition, the fourth tip is that whenever you see a tree, then by default, because the data is sorted, you have a navigable set or navigable map implementation. So tree set implements navigable set and tree map implements navigable map. So tree set and tree map have additional operations to do a subset based on the keys or subset based on the values depending on the collection. Remember these tips and I am sure you'd be able to remember all these collections very, very well. I hope you had a fun time in this section learning about all the collections. I had a great time preparing the material and also preparing the examples and presenting it out to you. I'll see you in the next section. Until then, bye-bye. This video is part of a Java course with more than 250 steps helping you become an expert on Java. You can find the complete course details in the description of the video. Along with it, you can also find the details of a free PDF with 200 pages of awesome code examples in 28 minutes, creating great programmers.